by the city but shut down by the state. Regulations designed to help Indianapolis renters could be canceled out by lawmakers at the state house. We first told you about these proposed rules in January. They are designed to protect tenants and give them access to legal aid. But RTV 6's Cameron Riddle shows you how a last minute effort could take all the power out of these new measures. We'll proceed to the board for a vote. The sound of the gavel and overwhelming eyes from the Democrat-heavy City County Council was supposed to be the start of new tenant protections across Indiana's largest city. Right now, Indiana is uh, one of eight states that doesn't have a retaliation protection for tenants. I know a tenant who's staying in the shelter right now, and she was evicted after having a verbal agreement with her landlord to keep her mother-in-law there. When she called the health department because her son burned himself on the broken covers on the electric baseboard heaters, they evicted her. And so she had no protections under the law for that. Well, now she will. Two proposals from the council would require landlords to give tenants a notice of their rights and responsibilities, establish a fund to help tenants with their legal aid, prohibit landlords from retaliating against tenants who file complaints, and prohibit discrimination against applicants based on their criminal records. While the city ordinance has been in the works for weeks, an amendment made just today to Senate Bill 340 by Republicans at the State House would void the major parts of the city's efforts and give more protections to Indiana landlords. The bill would also require any and all regulations to be authorized only by state lawmakers. Our General Assembly talks a lot about local rule unless it's an, an issue that really provides consumer-based protections. We have seen this happen way too often. Tonight, the Senate bill is getting major support from the Indiana Apartment Association, which believes if local cities have regulation power, then landlords would have varying rules from city to city. In a statement, the group says in part, the potential patchwork of policies will not only create confusion among landlords and tenants, but will also ultimately increase the cost of housing. Democrat and state representative Robin Shackelford is now making her plans to remove the amendment from that Senate bill. She says the extra work for landlords is nothing when compared to the living conditions many Hoosiers are dealing with every day. Now, for a landlord to say this is going to cost me an extra administrative cost, I may have to change my lease just because I need to inform you of your rights. I don't think that's any kind of justified argument when you're looking at tenants who don't have those rights. They need to know their rights, and you want them to live in un uh, condition, unhealthy conditions. Working for you in Indianapolis, don't Cameron Riddle, RTV6. Now let's take a look at the amendment that introduced today in the state Senate that would block the ordinances approved tonight. It would prevent all local governments from regulating how landlords screen tenants, security deposits, and other fees, the process for lease applications, lease terms and the rights and responsibilities of tenants. The amended bill passed in the Senate today. If it's approved by the House, it will undo key elements of the ordinances passed by the council tonight. The tenants rights initiative was initially introduced by Mayor Hogsett's office. Tonight, he weighed in on this unfolding regulation struggle between city representatives and state lawmakers. I just think that decisions to protect people from unfair evictions are most appropriately left to local government. And that's why we've supported this uh, at the City County Council. And you can learn more about the tenant rights ordinances passed tonight and the amendment in the State House at the IndyChannel.com and by using the RTV6 app.